Hey there. What's up, Ryan? Um, I'm going to take a look at your Baptiste today. I saw your Reddit post this morning. Um, this like you posted just an hour ago. You're 1,050 SR trying to play some Baptiste. Um, I'm not like a GM or anything, but I'm a plat Baptiste player. I like to play a lot of Baptiste, uh, especially recently. Um, and I, you know, I play a wide variety of other heroes too. I got a switch when I have the switch, you know what I mean? Um, but anyway, let's take a look at your Baptiste play and see what we can help you out with. So yeah, for, for starters, I do like your, um, beginning position here. You can stick around here for quite a while, but you do need to know when you're being pressured out. You can't, I don't think that you can stick around here for, um, after like the enemy team, let me pull the camera out here for a second. After the enemy team pulls around here and gets to like about, I'd say maybe like the back of this car, you're going to want to switch to cafe. All right. Now, what do I mean by that? Um, you're here on this position and you can back up instead. You can back up when they get to here. All right. But this isn't necessarily super safe, especially if your team starts like retreating around this corner to like use this natural cover here, then the enemy team can start swarming you this way. A Hanzo or a Genji can just climb up the wall and then you're like dueling a DPS hero. So be careful about sticking around here too long and overstaying your welcome. Um, so when you do start feeling that pressure, it's good to like drop off and then exit boots up here into cafe. This is cafe. So this is like really super safe positioning. All right. Um, let's see what you do. Oh, my click here. There we go. Nice. Okay. Oh yeah. And so you, you already make it in rotation. Nice. Look at you. That's awesome. Okay, you make sure to put some bullets into this Winston. So making sure you know this, and maybe you do, maybe you don't. Um, if you hold both secondary fire and primary fire at the same time, you can shoot both at the same time. Just hold them both down. Um, and so if we go back here for five seconds, right here, um, great opportunity to just kind of look at the Winston and hold both buttons. Because, yeah, you might not get that direct hit 70 healing, but you will get the splash healing on your Reinhardt here. Um, and be able to put some damage into the Winston's face. He's also got a really big head hitbox, really easy to hit that triple headshot. Three headshots from you at this range is 144 damage, so super worth it. I'm when you get out of that Hanzo spam, you saw that Hanzo over here, he's going to kind of mess with you. So, yeah, you want to be, like, backing over to here um, and get ready to, like, drop off the side here like this. Good. Look at you. Everything I suggest, you just kind of do it. That's awesome, man. Nice. It's a good lamp for your diva there. Um, good also to like uh, do one of two things here to maybe not stick around here. It's really susceptible. I really don't like being close to this Reinhardt here. So you could kind of hop back up here and put pressure on the Baptiste, Steve Hill back away, or you could walk into here and take this angle. This is a little bit better. Um, it, it doesn't give you as much sights as this, but this is like wide open. This makes this, I feel really uncomfortable about here. With him chasing you here, the right thing to do is actually going to be jump up top because he can't chase you up top, but he can chase you here. So that's unfortunate. Overall, from what I've seen, though, um, kind of the way you reposition and repath um, so far in this this game, for sure, I think you've shown me that you know the map pretty well and you are pretty good at pathing around. So that's good. You want to jump back up there. Nice. Careful taking duels with Hanzo. This, I, I'm not a big fan of this. Notice how you've got, like, your Hanzo on the job with a Mercy Pocket. Like, that can handle it. Um, if you continue this duel with Hanzo and he gets a headshot on you, then he's getting more value for his team than you're getting for your team. Nice. Are your Divas just going to feed in? 
What is your diva doing? Go back for a second. Excuse me? Well, I'm sorry. It's a little bit throwing, obviously. You can kill that monkey so bad. Like, he's so dead. Almost. Jump up there. Jump up there. Nice. Good job. It's huge. Oh, it's okay. I don't mind going on bank over here. Um, actually, I I do mind. Don't go up here on bank. You're fine what you're doing. I think you either jump up here or back off and come this way. Kind of get some, some distance here because they're already peeling around, right? You see this Hanzo? If you tried to go for bank, you'd die. The Hanzo's going to just kill you. And if he doesn't, then know that a better Hanzo in the SRs you want to be in, they would kill you. So that's kind of what matters more here when it comes to going for improvements. Um, your Mercy's going to die. And so essentially, since be since you don't have a presence here, they're going to keep walking forward. Assume, like, think in the future for a second here. And assume these people are going to get to about here before you're able to, like, regroup. So you need to go either up here and stay quiet or back off and go into this door so that you're, like, out of danger. Um, another option is to just throw yourself on the cart and die as quick as possible so that you can respawn with your team. Okay. Drop. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. You die as quick as possible. Die as quick as possible. I respect that. Alright. I have some chances here um, to throw these. There's no reason to like not just throw the right clicks. Here. So, see that you, you see he's crit. You can hit him from here. My ultimate's almost ready. We got window. Now, a really good time to use window is like post com like enemy commitment. When they've committed resources to approach you, you can drop the window and like put the pressure back on top of them um, and make it so that like think about it this way: if they spend an ult and then push you, and they're like they're gonna basically say we are going to spend this ult to win the fight, then you can say hold on, hold on, I have an ant matrix. So now your ult doesn't necessarily win the fight. Now they, now you have to invest another ult if you want to win the fight. And so it kind of like, it trades up. So instead of letting letting them win the fight for one ult, you can force them to use more ults to win the fight, if that makes sense. I think that, honestly, now that I'm saying that, it's probably more relevant um, as you get into higher ranks. Because in bronze, people don't really think about ult economy, hardly at all. And they're not going to they're not going to spend one ult and then call out to their team in voice chat like yo yo just this is ult just this ult you know that they're not going to be making like ult like ult economy calls like that so um people are probably just going to eat their ults now that i think about it in this in this rank this is fine so the reason i say this is fine um is because like instead of now I'm kind of backtracking what I said because now I'm and now I'm thinking of like what it would be like to play in bronze. I think that if you can just get kills and play it selfishly, that's probably a good thing. So if you're confident in yourself, right? Um, if you can place down a window and shoot through the window and know that like I can probably kill like one or two people with that. I mean, killing one or two people usually does confirm the fight. So I, I don't mind that, especially in this. Like I super don't mind that at all. Okay, so now that you have lost the point, um, you're gonna want to like pay attention to positioning here. You know for a fact that Diva is gonna die, right? Diva is pushing out here with all these people. She is going to die. You can kind of see that if I press O here, keyboard. You can see what Diva's facing up against, and you're probably dead too. But as soon as this point is taken, just know that like everything, all right, everything. Let me let me hold the camera right here and pull out the pen. I would say everything that is to like the right side of this imaginary line is now considered out of position. Okay. Because the cart needs to go this way. All right. Because your team is going to regroup from this direction, not from over here. All right. Then anything over here is bad because you are too far away from your team. You can't get support from your team. You can't get peel. 
it's really easy for the enemy team to have the choice of like, am I even going to walk towards you? Because you can't go back to your team without going through us, right? So if you're chilling over here, for example, and the cart gets to about here, enemy team can sit here and say, you know what? You can't get back to your team because if you try to come back to your team, we'll kill you. And so all of this, like being where you are right now is not where you want to be. And if I go back for a second, I'll show you. Hit play here. Okay, so this already looks like really bad. You see um, in this scenario, right? As you're looking out here, you're trying to like analyze the situation. You'll note that like they have four people on cart and you've got nobody. You don't even have to watch the cart hit the point, point B. You know it's going to hit the point, right? And so this is a situation where I would just beeline it. I would just walk this direction. Um, you're going to take some damage probably. So see if you can save yourself with this mega and then pull off this way. Because you know this is lost. Yeah, and then you just keep going. And this turning around here, this is um, kind of forcing yourself to get staggered. Because you could have gotten away. I guess you could still technically get away, maybe. Nice jump. This is going to hit you. Yeah. Alright. Move on. Oops. Some damage on him. Uh, good position, by the way. I really like playing on top of the RV. It's nice. Your Junkrat won the fight. Now you know there's a Hanzo up upper left because you heard the bullets. Careful, there's a Hanzo right here. Okay, he doesn't give a shit about you. Nice. Just bronze things. That's amazing. You can be cheeky here. This is fine. Um, you can play in this position and just see what you can get. Um, don't be afraid of it in, in bronze especially. People in bronze have a hard time like looking upwards. To, uh, to see the threats and to fight threats above them. Um, it's just like a disorienting thing for them. So you can kind of take advantage of that. It's it's partially why like Farah is so good in bronze because Farah can just fly above and shoot down. And it's really hard for bronze players to like figure out how to how to deal with that. So this is like the main problem you're going to have here is this Winston's going to be on top of you. You can live for a little while, but he can be also really aggressive. Then your reap protects you. That's awesome. Jump back up. Yeah, good on you to like, like, I'm gonna go back a second and just appreciate this, right? You see this like body shot they just hit you from a uh, Hanzo. And immediately you kind of pull back and you don't want to take the duel. That's a good instinct. That's a really good instinct because you do not want to take the duel. Now you're peeking again. You don't want to do that. Don't peek too much. Hanzo still wants your ass. Careful. Nice lamp there, actually. Your positioning is really good here. I'm gonna help with that Winston a little bit. Nice. Good shot. Yo, you don't need this. You don't need this. You don't need this. No, you don't need this. No, 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 no. You don't need this. Okay, so um, be careful about how long you're spending, like, thinking about that. Because I'm going to go back a second and just watch how you kind of stood there thinking about it. Like, you can see how terrible that was. Um, definitely be careful about that. That I'm surprised you just did that after how good of a performance I've been watching this whole time. So maybe... That's one aspect that's holding you back a little bit. Um, okay, what's good though is that by killing you, you saved your ult, which is the right thing for your team. Like, you didn't need the ult there. And so, um, kind of like, actually, it was better for you to have died there than to have wasted your ult. That's kind of nice. Okay. Keep shooting down that. You're fine. You're healthy. Chilling. You don't have to shoot that. 
That's not doing anything. What you should be doing here is watching down main and seeing what you can gather, right? So go back a second. We're looking at you here. I go back a little further. Okay. So you see this this Reaper doing this thing here. Um, you know the enemy team has has been like pretty well pushed back at this point. You can absolutely drop off the edge, and I'm gonna like follow my camera and watch like where you could go, right? You could jump off this edge. You could walk this direction. You could no, okay, then you wouldn't want to take that duel, but you backed away. You could sit here and shoot this direction. Just keep an eye on on main for a little bit, see what you can do, and then jump back up when they actually start gathering. Give know what kind of damage you can kind of get through there. Especially if you're confident in your aim. Now this is going to be rough. Press shift. Good. That's going to hurt if he lands on you. Shots. Nice. Save on your Hanzo. Good shots. Turn to that ball. Hold on. No, no, no. Dang, the Ryan Plank gets value. Keeping your Ryan up here. You want to be like putting some damage in with this too. Like, I think, I think. You could have um, helped your team kill the Reinhardt while, like, holding your team up throughout this whole thing. Because if you kind of look at his health, like, their Rhine right now is at, like, 200. Your Rhine's pretty low, too, right? But you have a shift. And so you can, like, shift, throw a heal, and then start looking at the Reinhardt a little bit. Yeah, your diva touches. Nice. Again, lamp. It should be savable. I think spikes one. Uh, I don't know if you need that, but it's fine. So. One thing I'd say, maybe something to adjust, is um, try to be a little bit more selfish in the lower ranks with your amplification matrix. Um, if you're confident enough in your own aim, then don't worry about what other people could do with your um, with your matrix. Just kind of worry about what value you can get, because you know your heals are also doubled, and sometimes you can save a teammate by putting down matrix and just healing them up really quickly. And also, if you are on the high ground, and I've noticed this from before, right? Earlier, um, when when you kind of like made the amplification matrix like down here, and, and you died in the process of doing it, kind of what you did there is you gave up a good position to drop an unneeded matrix, and you could have just stayed on the high ground and put a matrix on the high ground. And I, I know it doesn't sound like you're using it to its highest and best use, and that may be true, but just remember your team um they're thinking about a lot of things in bronze and they're kind of like mentally overwhelmed putting a like a matrix in front of you here um doesn't necessarily mean they comprehend the value you've just added to it doesn't mean they're going to shoot through it um it's it's not going to make much of a difference they're not going to put the highest and best use of it anyway now if you had a bastion on your team that'd be kind of different you'd probably want to stick with your bastion and put matrix in front of him but in a, in your team right now Almost nobody's really going to give a shit about the the matrix. If you want to call um, window fire strike with your Reinhardt and you're in count with him and he's going to actually listen to you, that's a different discussion. Because of course, fire strikes the window does 200 damage, so he can just kill squishies instantly with that. It's a cool combo to use as the enemy team like comes around a corner. But if you don't have that open communication with your Reinhardt and feel confident that he's going to like deliver on that combo, then I'd st I mean I'd just hold it for yourself. Hold it for yourself, probably. Because if you, if that's your mentality, you wouldn't even jump off of your good position. You wouldn't even give it up. Here's someone on the upper left. There's the Bastion. Nice. Luckily, you have a Hanzo here. And Hanzo's like the Bastion counter. 
Good. Getting back up here. I like it. Kill that bap. Gift that guy. here saving yourself the lamp you can jump back up maybe shoot the car oh the car is dead nice okay i see there now you're holding both buttons at the same time shooting and healing at the same time that's good Nice lamp. Very savable here. You can window this. I would just put it up top and don't jump down. Don't jump down. Nice. Okay. So from that game, I've, I've noticed that you do have some inclination to do damage. Um, I would say you can probably lean into that a little bit and do more. Um, try, I mean, I, I definitely see that the hit scam, hit, hit scan aim is like, it's like on par with your rank. But as you, as you want to get higher, you want to get grow to like silver, you probably do want to work on your aim a little bit. And so going into like deathmatch, especially going to gun games, would be good. Um, just work on hit scan heroes. Um, your your aim on Baptiste is going to be very similar to your aim on like uh, Cassidy, for example. Just working on your hit scan aim like that um, might be good just to practice and just get that aim down, so that you could be more confident in shooting the enemy team. Bap can output so much damage. I mean, he can get. He can get headshots, he can do all kinds of stuff. Oh no. This is a backup moment. You're probably gonna have to help your team out with the uh, Farah. Yep. Okay, you can do this. Almost, almost. That was close. I like your idea of going back up here on the side ground. That's good. I'm going to keep your eyes up too. Um, when you're like looking at your team here, um, you can kind of like keep your eyes in vision. Like look at your, your vision right now. You don't actually have sights of this high ground up here where the, or like I should say the, the roof. Because that's kind of where you're, you're going to expect that um, that fire to be coming from. Like, she's going to fly over the roof and shoot you from behind. She wants to be doing this kind of thing, right? Um, I noticed you're looking pretty far down a lot. So if you go back here and watch, like, your 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 mouse really is looking, like, pretty far down. I know you're trying to heal, but what you, but you, what you can do is kind of, like, think about um, the trajectory of your bullets. It kind of already arcs down a little bit. So you can, like... Shoot this guy, look up, shoot this guy, look up. And you kind of, you do need to be a little bit more erratic with your crosshair. Um, just so that you can like see the field more. Because you're just, you're looking so far down all the time that you're not going to see the far flank when it comes. The shift. Okay, and so as your team kind of pushes out here, it'd be really cool if you could go up here and start like holding up here. Um... It's going to be a little bit rough because of the Farah, but I mean, you can also shoot the Farah back and you can jump over the shots. A lot of times Farah will shoot your feet, but you have exo boots, so you can jump over the shot 
um, and, and while, while you're like jumping in the air, it's really easy for you to shoot her because you have hit scan, but it's hard for her to shoot you because her rockets move so slow and she's trying to hit like an like a floating target. Kind of hard. Cool lamp. Yeah, as far as on top of that hog. Um, so definitely go up top. 100% go up top. Let's get you back out there. You're not, you're not necessarily like ready for a recontest if it would happen. And sure, it might not happen here, but commonly, because they actually do have quite, they well, not like a whole lot, but they do have something here. Like they could actually recontest. Um, and in higher ranks, you might see them do that. If I go back a bit here. See how this like diva is chilling here. Now they have a mercy, they have a bap up top. Like there is potential recontest here, and your team's just not like super ready for it. You're, you're guarding this door, I guess. But there's still ways they could touch, and you're just most ready for that if you're already on that back high ground. You don't need to be shooting this table. Put this on main. What the heck? Get Mercy up here. A little bit of a waste of Matrix. I think there's a Ryan behind. Yeah. Make sure you're telling your team about these like really weird positions that the Reinhardt's taking. You go back a little bit. You go back a while. You see he threw this fire strike at you. And one thing you should note about him throwing a fire strike there, or that like when Ryan is standing here, is that he is a little bit like in a precarious situation. Um, he needs to defend. I'm gonna go back up here real quick. Okay, he needs to defend the cart from like going this way and turning this corner. And he's like inside of this room, okay? And so he can step out to try to defend the position and stop the car from moving. But when he's pressured, all he can do is go back inside, right? This makes it a little bit precarious because while he can retreat this direction, he is really not able to, like his retreat path is not the same path as the cart, right? So if he was here, then his retreat path is still kind of in front of the cart and the cart doesn't make progress for free when he retreats. Does that make sense? That's what makes this precarious. It's also like um, pretty far away from his team. If his team does have to start retreating, then he has to take this back route and he's kind of like really vulnerable, right? So it's a bit of, bit of a red flag for me. Like if I'm in this position as you, I'm, I'm noting that and I'm watching this run, okay? Because it's a good call out. If he stays there for too long, overstays his welcome, you can say, um, Ryan bottom right in tunnel. We can push him. He's feeding. He, Ryan inting. Ryan feeding. Right. Yeah. And uh, your Ryan does throw fire strike through the window and kill Bap. So that is pretty good. I'll, I'll, I'll give you a pass on that. Now you hear, you hear the Ryan behind. You hear those footsteps? Go back a second. Listen for footsteps. Listen for the Ryan footsteps. Hear that? When you hear that, there, you need to at least like look behind you, right? You need to look behind you. And if you can't hear that in your headphones and that didn't like prompt you to look behind, then really take a look at what your sound situation is. Make sure you are listening with decent sound so that you know someone's behind you. Because that's so important. You want to um, jump on top of this little thing here and then jump up top to here. 
Like, don't play low around here if you don't have to. Plenty of awnings to jump on top to, to get on top of one of the two big buildings. Yeah. I can die easily. Okay, good. You want to hold as forward as possible. Um, someone else on your team can push a cart. You want to be up here. You want to like shoot from here or shoot from this side. Uh, personally, I like this side a lot. You can also jump on top of this, be up here. Um, but yeah, you want to be on this building. Oops, that's not you. There we go. Yep, I think you see it. Nice. Good hop. If you say like hello with BAP, he'll like he'll pull his hand up forward, right? Like that. He'll like do like the little P sign forward. And then if you press melee, he'll keep his hand there and like do a punch. It's a really cool little uh awesome combo. You should totally do it. It makes her aim better. It doesn't, I'm just joking, but it's pretty cool. Keeping your eye up here. Nice. Watch this far, though. On your team, you are the best equipped to deal with the Farah. Unfortunately, like you don't, you just don't have hit scans, so you're the only one. You're really the one that can deal with Farah, which means you're really gonna have to like bring the heat, bring your A game. A little slow on the immortality. It's okay. Your team needs to fall back all the way to spawn. I'm just gonna die here. What, what in the bronze? Okay. Mega question marks about that. No. You use it up here. Don't put it down there. Put it right on top of you. Is it massive? They just allowed that to happen. That was super weird. What the fuck? Why is D.Va just chilling behind? You're not, you guys aren't calling that? Like, this is actually a happening. The D.Va's at half has like 400 HP to speed your ults. This guy is still just chilling. What the fuck is he doing? Interesting. So this should be an easy win because they're throwing on D.Va. He does a bomb. I think he's trying to go for like a bomb behind. Okay. Dude, their D.Va is so dumb. What is she doing? Tough one to jump up to, by the way. Um, if you're standing here, you cannot quite make it on top. So you can st stand on, I think if you're on the very top of the cart, you can make it to the top. Otherwise, you can jump onto this box first and then jump up. Get immortality field. Oh, a little over. Go back a second. You see you throwing these mines or these uh, um, nades at them for like healing nades. Your immortality field follows the same exact arc as your secondary like healing healing nades, right? So go back a second here and play this like slow. You kind of see the arcs. Like look at the arc it follows. See that arc? And then that arc, you see that one? And then you look up a little bit too high here. You look up and it follows the same exact arc, okay? So what you should have done instead is exo boots.
at some height and just throw it down on top of them. Because you see what happens here, right? The disc follows, falls uh, a little bit too far up. Nice. Okay. Yeah, your ant matrixes are, um, or ant matrices. Definitely need a little bit of work. You get the win, though. So that's good. Um, these, these matrices are best placed just behind, right? What you could have done this whole time is you could have just hopped up here real quick, dropped your matrix, and just shot from up here. Or jump up here, drop your matrix, and just shoot from up here. Um, you could have gone this way, drop your matrix, and just chill here. Watch people coming out of spawn and just like triple tap them in the head, kill them instantly. Um, if you're shooting through Matrix and you get three headshots, it's 288 damage. That can one shot almost any DPS hero if you're really accurate about it. So just keep that in mind. I think, you know, because a lot of these windows have definitely been just, it looks like you're trying to figure out what to do with this ultimate ability. Um, just for the time being, as you're climbing from bronze to silver and even from silver to gold i would exclusively use them as personal damage and healing amplifiers because all it does is just amplify projectiles by um, double their damage and healing there's no reason not to just kind of sit back in a safe position put the matrix in front of you and use it yourself um, again i don't trust bronze teammates to utilize the window um, very well so but I do know that if you place the window yourself and you've got the idea on what you want to do with it, then I at least trust you that you're going to do something with it. So just be selfish. Just be more selfish with it. Okay. That is pretty much... Let's see your post real quick. Um, you're working on your positioning and was wondering how well I did in this match. I feel like I could have done more or had better positioning at certain points. If you wanted to talk through Discord, I'm fine with that. Um, and include my profile. Oh, include my profile. So send me friends request. Cool. Actually, I might send you um, a friends request on Discord. But yeah, I think um, positioning is something you're working on. And it is, in my opinion, it is really good for your rank. So. Um, if there was one thing you were working, would be working on right now, I would say it's, um, ability usage of your matrix. Um, and your, I think, you know, we could all work on our, our shifts. We could all work on our lamps or whatever. Um, but that's just going to kind of come in time really is, I think this adjustment to being more selfish with your matrix and then, um, just practice aim, really practice that aim so that you can do damage. Um, and when you're looking at your um, stats at the end of the game, try to look at the disparity between your damage and your healing. Now, usually, almost always, you're going to have more healing than damage, but just know that um, like really high-level bat players, um, they'll have a lot closer to the same number of damage they do healing. Like if they have 10,000 damage, they'll probably have about 10 to 11,000 healing. Some of them even do more damage than healing, which kind of reveals like where the real power of BAP is. The fact that he can do both damage and healing. He can get value as like almost kind of like a DPS hero, but he can also heal the entire team a lot. He can heal so much. So make sure that if you're seeing like 10,000 healing and 1,000 damage, that's too much of a disparity. You did not do enough damage. If you see like 10,000 damage, or sorry, 10,000 healing, 5,000 damage, you did better. It takes a while. It takes um, quite a while, in fact, to get to the point where you're you're really seeing the numbers be about the same. And um, yes, but, but just something to keep in mind. So when you're looking at the end of the game, you wonder, did I do enough damage? Well, if you only did a tenth of the damage that you healed, no, you did not. You did not do enough damage. Um, for, for like when you're starting off with this idea of doing a lot more damage, try to just aim for about half the amount of healing. So if you do 10,000 healing, try to do 5,000 damage. Try to get that 5,000. Make that be kind of your goal. And then like work your way up. Set bigger goals from there. 
um, as you go to climb. All right. Um, but yeah, I'll add you on uh, Discord and I'll upload this video to YouTube. So uh, looking forward to hearing from you.